Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with a quick video guide on five things I wish I knew when I started playing The Lord of the Rings, The Rise to War. All right, getting right into things here. My first tip is to focus on fewer commanders. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a pretty good variety. I actually have 10 commanders here. I've got relatively lucky on uh, on some full pulls here. Uh, you know, got Aragorn for a dollar, so I, I haven't spent a ridiculous amount. Definitely, definitely uh, more than maybe the casual player. Uh, but I got a lot of commanders early on and I've started spreading out the XP to all of them because in my mind having more commanders uh, is a good thing and there is some truth to that again when you're doing some sieging and you need more commanders if you have more high level ones that can take more troops uh, that that's pretty good but uh, I've realized that I've been less able to take big you know 200 plus tile uh, power tiles I'm, I am able to take them. Uh, but I think I've been limited in how much I can do that, and I think the troop costs, the, the losses I'm seeing are greater than they should be had I just focused on maybe two commanders uh, and gotten them maxed out first and then continue on some that I would like to. So I would definitely say focus on fewer commanders, and that kind of goes with your gear as well. Put your best gear on your best commanders. Get the most use out of it. I've just recently kind of moved stuff around uh, to Dwalin here, for example, that I had spread around on more commanders but wanted to get stuff uh, that I thought was going to be the best for him and how I'm using him. So focus on fewer commanders and uh, sooner rather than later, you're going to be able to take more powerful tiles and you're going to be able to take them more easily with less uh, losses, which is going to be huge and giving you an advantage in the early to mid game. Number two is to get involved with your faction early on. Uh, this could be faction or fellowship specific, but I can't state enough the importance of getting involved. Uh, I started out playing as Gondor and recently switched to Erebor. Kind of a long story with all that, but uh, I spent a lot of time when I was playing as Gondor. I had pretty much max tiles. I'm just starting out here as Erebor, so I'm trying to catch back up. But I spent a lot of time getting tiles, doing the PvE, playing kind of by myself, and I liked that. Uh, and, you know, getting my ring power up very, very high. Uh, but then I realized I hadn't really been participating and paying attention to what things were going on in the world. Now, I don't think that was the call for Gondor's fall, or I don't think that was the reason for Gondor's fall. Uh, there was a lot going on there. But uh, you never know if more people focused on playing as a faction. Um, you know, you can do both. You can still keep taking high power tiles, but get involved in your faction chat. See what they're doing. See what areas they're wanting to move on and then uh, capitalize there and, and be a part of those things. And at, at the very least, you're going to learn more about the game, how the combat works um, and, and stuff like that. So I would definitely, definitely suggest, and if I could start all over again, I would have much more quickly gotten involved with my faction, figured out, okay, what, what strongholds are they going to start taking first and get involved with those things. Uh, even if it means traveling a great distance, I think, I think it's going to be an advantage to get involved with those things early on. Number three thing that I wish I would have done sooner was to focus more on my tribute buildings. As you see here, uh, I've got maxed out main hall. Almost everything's maxed out here in my main settlement area. Um, and uh, also in my main thing here, which is now dwarves, it was Gondor. Uh, but I let these lag behind for a while. And I've just kind of realized how much this wood production uh, per hour is going to add up. Again, this is this structure bonus that you see right here. And just getting that... Um, just getting that up much higher earlier on is just going to, again, over the course of several weeks or months or however long your server goes on, that's going to play a huge part in how much you're able to do. So get those maxed out pretty much as quickly as possible. They don't take that long to upgrade. Again, going to level 19, I think, takes like 10 hours uh, as compared to like upgrading certain things like the, you know, your... Uh, tier four troop this is going to take 34 hours so you can get a lot of these done more quickly and then use those resources to move on to the more expensive projects uh, i know it's tempting to rush these different areas and, and you know town hall 10 has been nice and i've been able to get good stuff uh, but if i could go back i would probably maybe max these out first if not close to first i'm not saying they're like like the best thing i think the military academy might be one of the best buildings in the game uh, but definitely just don't don't ignore these. Uh, you can also go into the ring perk that boosts that, which is this one right here, uh, resource tribute bonus. So get that up to 30% if you want. And then here where it says ring buffs, you're going to see a 30% bonus from your structure bonus here. So again, you could be getting a lot of, a lot of resources, not to mention if you get in a good fellowship, uh, just from having those buildings. And that doesn't, you know, count what tiles you have, which again, I'm, I'm starting over here as, as the dwarf. So we are 
low there. But that would be tip number three. Tip number four, sort of in that same vein of building and doing stuff, is to focus on on your faction-specific units first. Now, I'm not saying you can't upgrade all of these and get all kinds of different troops and things. Uh, but for me, when I started playing, again, I started as Gondor. Uh, the game starts you off with a lot of different troops, uh, like it gives you some eagles and bayornings, and I spent my gold upgrading some of their abilities here. Again, you can see that's three, uh, and that's two, and then as I got lower level troops, um, you know, I had different level one troops that I would start with. I did upgrade those slightly as well, so uh, I basically spread a lot of my gold out more than I should have. Uh, and I would definitely suggest focusing on one. So now that I've kind of dialed it back in, uh, I'm focusing on finishing the Master Throwers, for example. I've got one more level to go on them. And then I'm going to move over to my Iron Warriors and get them going. Uh, just making those troops as good as possible before moving on. Uh, because it's just going to take you a lot longer if you spread that all out. And your opponents probably aren't doing that. And if you get attacked against uh, you know similar level troops, they might have the advantage because they have upgraded all their troops. So focus on your troops, uh, like finishing one at a time. But also in terms of your building upgrades, if you go over here, um, there's not a whole lot of point unless you don't... Like if you start as Gondor, they don't have a ranged troop. That was actually one of my problems playing as Gondor. Uh, so I, I ended up going into uh, getting the axe throwers quicker when I was playing as Gondor. Uh, but you have a lot of good troops within your faction, and you can get these a lot quicker. So you can get these upgraded all the way and get their conscription times down and get better troops sooner, as opposed to me playing as the dwarves and wanting to get uh, the herald, for example, right away. Uh, it's just going to take longer to get all the way down here. There is an advantage to upgrading the elven all, all the quarters for the different uh, factions, because those do give you um, stone production and... Uh, it changes the amount of gold that you can levy each day. So getting those maxed out is just going to change the gold you can get, which can be helpful as well. But again, just focusing on your faction specific stuff first, getting yourself some good troops going and then moving out from there. Don't spread yourself too thin over all of the options in the game. And the last tip and thing I wish I had done was to uh, start expanding out from my base. Again, I started as Gondor. I was up in here somewhere and, uh, pretty much just sat around my base capturing stuff was going around a little bit and then it seemed like as my faction was having conflicts i was too far away to do anything uh, and that might be the reality some of the time uh, but the more you stay by your base the harder it's going to be to expand out especially as certain land tiles start getting taken around me there's not a whole lot left again i've switched factions i've said it five times already so it's a little bit different situation here but if you spread out from your base get fortresses or forts going all over the place you can more quickly move around and help out with what your faction is doing as well as being closer to different uh world things you might want to you know capture there might be different uh hireable building like, like like bay awnings or oath breakers those things and you might uh, be able to get to those quicker if you've moved around more uh or just certain types of resources that you need more uh you know like i i'm have the lowest production right now on wheat it looks like so again the more you spread out the more options you're going to have for that so definitely don't stick around your base don't just like encircle and take every tile around your base move out in in kind of all directions but figure out what your faction's doing get involved with that and be active kind of all over as much as you can. But again, that has been five things that I wish I knew, things I'll definitely be doing going into season two, or if I did start a new account, these are things I would do right away. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful to you guys. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join our fellowship here on YouTube. I also stream over on Twitch, so if you want to come hang out over there, ask some questions, or just hang out as we play the Rise to War and other Lord of the Rings games, uh, I'd be happy to see you there. So thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.